Good morning everybody and welcome back to Mashed Potato stream and we are going to make some wonderful race car aerodynamics simulation uh, respective the post processing today. Thank you for tuning in again and yes let's just right away start. I have already opened up um, my SimCenter Star CCM Plus simulation from the last time. I hope you can all see me and hear me. And um, yes, I have let them run some 600 um, iterations. I should have done more. You could tell from the still falling residuals or maybe better from the lift coefficients that haven't been stable for the last like 100 iterations that's most likely a criterion on, on which I um, judge that the convergence has achieved has been achieved well if I had more time I would uh, like do another 400 iterations until we reach like 1000 but that should be enough for today as I don't expect the visual results to differ a lot. So let's start today at that point. First of all um, people might ask why do, does post-processing matter? Well I'm not directly answering that question today because that would be like an hour talking just about uh, the, the impact of visual storytelling um, might be uh, another might be uh, a great opportunity for another session so let's start here we have done the simulation it has all run and we are creating a new empty scene don't let uh, the already pre paired scenes confuse you because we are not dealing with them here all these scenes we don't want them uh, we could delete them for now ah that's okay one of them is still used elsewhere so we will let this one fly around yes I want to delete all the others here we go so we have a white sheet right now and we want to do some wonderful post-processing yep there's nothing in this scene because it's just empty. Mm, when you want to take a look at uh, your results of your um, simulation, external aerodynamics, one thing you might want to look at is the pressure on the geometry or the pressure in the whole air. So let's start with pressure on geometries for now. What I'm doing is I'm just uh, I could um, drag and drop my regions into my uh, scene and start with that or I could just say okay I want a new display in my scene and make it scalar. So then under parts I just select what I want to have and I'm confused by the tree view that I'm seeing. It's just because that's displaying everything that I have in here as a list which is way too much to, to cope with. So I'm just uh, going back to the tree and then I select my regions from there. First of all I could just select everything like that. And now I see that uh, my computer is loading some more parts and here we are. That's like my whole block and there's my car. Nice. Wonderful. Wonderful. So now it wants me here to select a function, a field function. Could I either click on that or just go here for scalar function, which I will do for now. So first we, we said uh, we wanted to go for pressure. You can notice at that point that we have several uh, options for pressure. 
I used the search field to narrow down my selection and it says absolute pressure, absolute total pressure, pressure, pressure coefficient, relative total pressure, static pressure, total pressure with pre respect to coordinate systems and total pressure coefficient. <sighs> okay, cool. Um, well, people who are interested should just uh, consult uh, the help file and find out what's the difference between them. I'm not describing everything, every of them here. But first of all, I will, um, I will take pressure. By the way, if you have any questions, you can just type them in the chat. This time, I promise I will faster respond to your comments because that was uh, a bit of an issue last time. So here we go. That's like a typical view that you get when you apply your field function to the to your boundaries and the displayer. And now it looks like that. Well, wonderful. The other side, there's just like yellow big surfaces. Okay, that's like the new standard colors of uh, SimCenter Star CCM Plus. It's blue, yellow, red. Uh, the old one was more like this. And this is typically what you see in CFD simulations. They just uh, have it like that and keep it like that and uh, that's all they present to people. Then they expect uh, to see something interesting. So first of all, um, what we are going to do is, um, well, let's eliminate those areas that are not really interesting. So like the inlet yeah, and the outlet. Because these are completely constant. So we can either uh, go here and right click and say hide or we can go into the parts and open them up and then we can also say like not only hide but directly remove. So inlet and outlet, I clicked uh, control to uh, select them both and I say remove. Well, for now, that's at least a little bit better, the view. Yeah, it's not perfect, but that's like, at least we <laughs> can take a look at the geometry. But there's still, still th something that's uh, disturbing me right here. So I can't even see into the wheels, which is kind of pity, but we will deal with that. So why can't we see in inside the wheels? It's because we have these interfaces. See? These interfaces right here that uh, might disturb us a little bit. So I'm saying remove here as well. Still can't see in inside the wheels. Well, that's because the interfaces are on both sides. They are both on the outside from the wheel, uh, on the outside meaning in the air domain and on the MRF region as well. And then we see a lot of internal things here and they don't even appear somewhere. What's that? Well, that's uh, old boundaries that came from deleted um, cells. Before running the simulation, I tend to delete invalid cells and then these boundaries occur. They don't mean anything. They are just like, there's, it's nothing happening there. They might even be from a previous simulation run. They just stock up and don't interest us. So we just remove them. From time to time, when I delete my meshes, I will also delete these uh, internal boundaries, but not today. So I'm removing them as well from the MRF regions. And then we are good to go. So here we can see the other sides of the interfaces, which I will also remove. Way wonderful. Cool. So now we have these parts all here and we can't tell anything from our color bar. And the green is starting to disturb me, but that's another point. So. First of all, let's take a look at our color bar. 
there are some regions, for now I might just uh, hide the, the floor and hide the symmetry plane to just see the car. There are some regions where we have some shades of blue and I can't even see any a single point where we have red. Yeah. So I think this color bar is spread a little bit too far. So first I'm gonna do, I'm, I will just manually increase the negative um, limit. Ah, see, we have more blue now. And then I'm gonna decrease the positive limit as well. Ah, see, now suddenly red becomes meaningful and blue actually is something we can see. And I, th I think that's like appropriate. If I said, okay, let's just limit it to zero, <laughs> that's like, hmm, a bit too far, I would guess, because now you can't uh, see <laughs> like any under pressure zone. If you said, okay, I just want to focus on the high pressure zones or high field function zones, that could be appropriate. But I don't think it is. So let's go back to minus 400 or something. Okay. <laughs> what do we have here? Is this appropriate? I would say no. Because what's the standard pressure of my domain? For that we might want to uh, sh re show the... It can be normalized between zero and one what do you mean you you could make your own field function and uh, divide it by the maximum Zuga seven thank you for your question so that what you mean by uh, divide uh, by normalizing just take the max and divide everything by that you could do that or you could do that better in the pressure coefficient because that's literally what it is, what pressure coefficient is about. Yeah, then you have something normalized. Yeah. For you, I don't have a radiator in here, so I can't show the pressure around the radiator. Sorry, Deathstroke, 60, 1610. Can't show. Now. The radiator at that car was positioned somewhere around here at the back where there's just like low pressure zone and uh, the car concept didn't rely on um, on like you say is it natural convection or a uh, ram air maybe better but it relied on forced convection with a ra with a ventilator okay so I wanted to go to Zuga's question and uh, uh, show him the pressure coefficient. So pressure coefficient should look like that. Okay, it's not yet uh, prepared. Pressure coefficient and total pressure coefficient are these normalized values? Nah. No, uh, that's that's what why we are here for Zuga. That's not your bad. It's not your fault is if uh, you haven't learned so far so that's why we meet on a Saturday morning uh, let's go to the automation node for older versions of SimCenter Star CCM you might find it in the tools section but we need to go for field function here we are at field functions and when you scroll down to p -p 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 pressure coefficient here it says okay What's your reference density? What's your reference pressure? And what's your uh, reference velocity? Well, the velocities, obviously, I have already entered the reference velocity. So I'm only entering the reference density here, which was 118,415. And yes, if you've done that like a hundred times, you know it by heart. And then I need to tune it somehow. So I'm only I will tune it like that. So going for min minus one and positive plus one. The um, 
thing is, when you have these extreme values here, that might be an indication that we still got divergence or not convergence in some cells. So, uh, Zuga, this is like the normalized what you wanted to have. Here again, you can see that's like the standard pressure here, the whole green part of it. Yeah, I call it the CFD green screen. Okay, um, and now I have done something that uh, you should typically do if you have a quantity like pressure, which has a positive and a negative side. So you can make this one symmetric. This is what I made here. Minus one plus one. But well, let's go back to pressure itself, um, which is like the same. And I could make the exact same picture if I just said, okay, I'm going here for tw 200 and going here for minus 200. Okay, it might be scaled a bit from the pressure coefficient scene, but it's literally just the same because pressure coefficient is normalized as we just discussed. So, what is here? What can we see here? Well, there is some great under pressure under the front wing some under pressure under the uh, um, under tray in the side diffuser there is great under pressure and a little bit down here so uh, over pressure at the nose and on the se this section here yes but please can we now get rid of that disturbing green because I just I can't stand it. So let's let's switch to another color bar. As I said, um, I have for my old team I have uh, uh, prepared color bars like these. I called them my old team is called Cure, and so I called them Cure Bright. So this might be an adequate color bar for the application. But still, we have that disturbing green in here. So what I'm doing now is changing the color bar. So, and what are we gonna do here? Well, this is something where I'd say we edit a copy and I'm just gonna call it cure pressure or something. Pressure. Okay, in a case where we have that positive field and negative field. I would just say that you take the neutral point in the middle as white. So you just click on that dot here and say okay go for white. And suddenly with that small change you instantly get a visual focus on what really matters here. Yeah? See the inlet is like white now or grayish something. We will correct that in a, in a minute. And um, the overpressure zones and the underpressure zones instantly get into your focus. And that's what we're talking about. Yeah, right. Okay. Next thing is if you have that neutral midpoint yeah, you can't reach that if you have 32 levels of color. Go for 31. Yeah, appearance changed a bit. But now the zero is right in the middle. And yeah, you can see the whole plane gets white. And now you can be sure, okay, the zero is not positioned perfectly in the red, but that's just a label thing. Now you can really see where we have zero pressure, like the inlet, and towards the outlet we again are at zero pressure. Because we ha now have that symmetrical view, white, zero, in the middle. And then we have 15 levels for minus pressure and 15 levels for positive pressure. So it might be even better if we have like a 200, might even be better if you go for 21, then we have like 10 Pascals per color level. 
but for best visual appearance I would change that later. So that's already done right now. This is really helpful. You're welcome. That's like my job. Making nice images and making meaningful images. So um, next tip is well that coordinate system. Who cares? Really, who cares? You might need it during setup, but you don't need it in your visual uh, impressions. Yeah, Z axis is always upside down. X axis is your driving direction. It doesn't matter if it's positive that way, positive that way. Who cares? Just get rid of it. Yeah. If you want to, you can add your second logo in the top right, for example. You can also delete the SimCenter Star CCM Plus logo, but for now, let's keep it in the foreground. So I'm going for attributes, annotations. Here you could select another logo or iteration or whatever. So adding the Cure logo here as well. Ta-da! Here we go. I'm ah, leaving that out because I'm not working for them today. Then we can click on the logo and say, okay, we well, want it in the foreground. And now it doesn't. It will always stay on top. Ah, yes. I like it like that. So, next step. Take a look at this here. You can still see steps. And that's like the numerical char character of our of our simulation. Yeah? This is an artifact from discretization. So how to visualize that? Well, I click on show all meshes. And then you can see every cell has one pressure value. Not more, not less. Nothing interpolated. That's the discretization thing that we just do. You can't apply more than one value into one cell. That is valid for every cell, no matter how hard you zoom in. Yeah. Okay. But that is not exactly nature. Nature does not know jumps, makes no jumps. I guess it was, was it Einstein who said that? He translated it back to Latin, natura non facit saltus. The nature makes no jumps. So jumping from one cell to another cell and jumping from one value to another value, that doesn't happen. So this is what we are getting rid of. And how do we do that? Well, we go here for scalar one which we first name something like, uh, let's call it 20 pressure. And then I switch the contour style to, yeah, something else. What do we have uh, here? Well, what we are currently seeing here is the filled option. Every single mesh cell is filled with one color according to its value, to its discretization numeric value. We could also say smooth filled. Yeah, and that doesn't change anything. Ah, it does change something. Now we get something like that. It still is kind of bumpy. Yeah, you can see there are like edges. And if you turn on the meshes, you can see that it's like, it looks like that. That's not the representation which is really stored in our simulation. That's just like an interpolation between cells. And that's, from my point of view, more, more like uh, what reality might be. So this looks already like a bit smoother, a bit maybe more like what reality is about. Um, you could also do this with lines added, which I don't like at all. I never use filled and I never use uh, I never use smooth filled and I never use lines but if you want to you can have the gradient you can have the single regions just like um, 
circled around and you could also then customize your your uh, your uh, um, your your um, line color I guess yes you can you can also add like uh, ISO line labels which then highlight some points whoops sorry they just highlight some points and give a label to that but as you can see that can turn out to be more confusing than helpful so and it really slows down things so I don't like them and turn them off and if you have smooth filled plus lines you can also go for lines which will ju then just give you these lines after some computing yeah which is like the ISO pressure lines so the region within is uh, something is uh, the value that's uh, that's lying beneath um, that doesn't really work without a geometry below yeah you should show the geometry as well in that case and I don't like it but the last option is like the best one from my point of view which is smooth blended and there you get like really round circles here and it's like the best option to display that the color interpolation can be smooth which is then like a smooth uh, uh, filled yeah which gives that impression that I don't like either and it gives that impression which is something that I would call like the nicest inter uh, the nicest representation at that point because then you can instantly say okay that region is below 200 200 pascals that region here is above 200 plus and that's like a neut neutral region and here we go again everything fine okay cool 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 Now we have our own color scheme. We have some some cool representation here, and um, yeah, I think that's like a decent visual improvement already. What I would also suggest is like um, working on the uh, label format. You can click in in in. In color bar you can go for expert and then you have the label format and you can tune it a bit and say left justified labels go away and then you have right justified or you have middle so we are closer to the zero actually ah, I it, it's now this point here is zero ah, it's a tiny bit of misalignment but I hope you don't mind okay you can also increase like the number of labels but please don't go for an uneven uh, for an even number of labels like that if you have something symmetrical yeah then just highlight the zero okay and don't go for something like that because these values are just ugly yeah nobody needs them um, so go for something like I like that yeah three or five something like that um, I would ask you to uh, always set these scalar fields min max by your own especially when you are uh, exporting transient data uh, there is nothing worse than uh, legends that are showing like 745 digits <laughs> of uh, a value like if it is said like 213.356783 uh, to whatever like a number like that that won't help every anybody yeah these these uh, uh, digits are not significant just leave them all out if you have like three of them that should be enough at that point and if you have a, a transient simulation and you export like every time step a new picture 
make sure that your legend is fixed. Because, for example, if you have a cooling process and record it in transient, your part cools down, but your maximum limit will just decrease and the visual appearance will stay the same. And then the, uh, the, the user will always have to look at the simulation and then look at the, at the legend and always say, okay, now it's uh, 50 degrees, now it's 40 degrees, now it's 30 degrees and it's going down. Yeah, just fix this legend by setting fixed values in here, plus minus, and then you have like the initial value, let's see, 100 degrees, then it's going down, and the, the color scheme of the, the part that's cooling down goes from blue over white to red, uh, from red over white to blue, something like that for, for heat or something. Okay. That's uh, another tip for transient simulations, which we're not doing here. So, if I wanted to have that uh, looking even better, I would say, yeah, let's just delete out the yellow first. Ah, looks maybe not so cool as before, but has more like the positive is red and negative is blue character now. If I don't like the representation or that ramp type, you can also switch it around. Just try it out. Say linear. Okay, now we have more red parts and uh, the blue is a bit more spread. And the whitish, uh, the pale areas here have become more intense. Um, yes, that could be an option, which is linear. The standard is square root or you can go for S curve. And now we get some some pink in it, which I kind of like, because it's yeah adding some more unusual. And I really really like it, to be honest. So, mm, if I don't focus directly on data, but go for. Uh, Hey Noble Six I am welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us again. Um, yes, I have shown CP and CP. Uh, I have shown coefficient of pressure before. We can go for that as well. I'm not directly into discussing, so I'm tuning it to minus one and one. That's like the same image, but now it's normalized, as we discussed, uh, uh, initiated by Zuga as well. Um, mm, the thing is, when should you use physical quantities, pressure instead of coefficients? Well, that's basically up to you what to show and where to get your interpretations from. Yeah, because. The results of the CFD simulation might be black numbers on a white sheet. Like, that's the number of downforce, that's the number of drag of that car. The other thing is, why? Why does my front wing increase downforce compared to the last part? Why has it less drag than last time? And for that we need to dive into the visual data. And if you simulate it all the time at the same velocities, then it doesn't matter if you look for the uh, coefficients, which uh, take into account the velocity, or if you look at the at the if you look for the coefficients or the physical value, the pressure itself, which is not normalized. If you switch velocities between these simulations, yes, always go for the coefficients. Um, yes. Next note, um, you mentioned CP tot, which is total pressure coefficient. Uh, pressure. Total pressure coefficient. Yeah, you're welcome. So. I'm giving you kind of an explanation which is not exactly precise. Ah, uh, you know what? 
I will just now uh, give you a comparison of these two. What I'm doing, I will uh, try to compare two uh, to, uh, uh, views right now and I will show you how. But first we need to go for the uh, total pressure coefficient and see what it's in there. Reference density. Ah, it's set to 1. That's like wrong. And we will do it like that. And now we have done that. We will just minimize the feed functions. And I will duplicate my scene. Just copying it and pasting it here. So we have scene 1 and scene 1 copy. And they are both open. So first of all I'm gonna put the second one here. Yep. And then I'm going for the scene one again. And I'm saying, okay, let's put the pressure coefficient here. Pressure coefficient here to have them side by side. And, oh, okay, scene one copy is over there. And make it min minus one and plus. So, now we have some like independent views and we are gonna change that for now because we want to look for exactly what uh, Liam, uh, Noble 6IM, Noble Liam, maybe, um, asked for. So I'm gonna ma mark the, these scene both and say click right and then say linked view. And now, when I move one, I move two. And let me just switch depth peeling instead of alpha blending. Sometimes give, gives a better impression. So now I have a linked view. I can directly see what is the difference between them and why is my representation with that blue, red, minus one to one correct for the right image and not for the left image. Well, here, our main region is at zero. Yeah, it's a symmetrical field function. Yeah, there are over pressure zones and under pressure zones. The main pressure of the whole domain is zero. On the left side, the, the main region is not zero, but one. Yeah, see, the free stream here comes in at one, total pressure coefficient of one. And it goes out at 1. Yeah, there's something which is not at 1. So what is the difference between the field functions? Well, the right side is a pressure coefficient. And the left side, I would not say is even... Is, it is a bit misleading to call it a total pressure coefficient. I would more likely say it's some energy coefficient. Because... The total pressure is coming from Bernoulli equations and velocity goes in there and pressure goes in there and your height of the fluid and whatsoever. So it's more like an energy quantity. So everything, everywhere I have non-1, I have some kind of energy loss. Yeah. I can find region, regions where the energy is higher than zero, uh, higher than one, because it gets forced into a small gap, accelerated or somewhere. But it's always like that energy is coming from elsewhere. And a total pressure coefficient doesn't make sense from my point of view on the surface itself, because it's a flow property. It's not a surface property. It's like, how much energy do I lose here? I can still see that here the, the flow outside the diffuser is still energized. Yeah, and the flow below the rear wing, although it's low pressure, it's still energized. Yeah, it gets slowed down a bit here, like uh, that's drag. But the flow behind, uh, be, uh, below the front wing, it's still full energy, and here it's still full energy. So that's like totally different coefficients, CP and CP tot. Keep that in mind. CP tot is more like an energy. <laughs> Oh boy, I can't read your name. I'm sorry. <laughs> but thank you that you really like uh, that energy analogy. 
as I told in my first stream, I'm not doing exact science and holding lectures here. That's more like an analogy. It's not. It doesn't have the the. I don't. Um, <laughs> thank you, thank you, for that. Yeah, I don't uh, have the the. I don't think um, you should trust everything I say in a way that you can quote me as you can maybe quote some literature. Yeah. Please be aware of that. So. Okay. Last thing on total pressure coefficient before we skip away from that. Total pressure coefficient is more like an energy. The zero is not something neutral. Yeah. So I would not say we go from we need some white here in the middle. So that's why I would definitely, so scene one, first of all, we're doing like 21 CP tot. And then we would definitely go away from the white, red, and more like go for the full color sheen. Yeah. And here again, it doesn't really make sense on the, on the car from my point of view. Yeah, well, because what does it represent on the car? For the car surface, use pressure. That's like my last word on uh, on um, this. If you don't want to have uh, duplicated duplicate scenes, you can also go like, okay, we will delete the scene, uh, copy, and. Uh, but I still want to preserve that displayer, so I'm going to copy this and paste it here. Yeah, then double click on it, so it's vanished. No, double click it again. Double click that one. Then I can close that scene. And delete my copy. We don't need that anymore. Hello. Yes, I want to delete it. Ah, da -da -da -da. So, if you right click on the scene and say refresh, it orders uh, the, the, the things here. <sighs> what, what did I want to say here? Okay, first we are restoring the floor again to see the pressure on the floor as well. Okay, but now let's just make a beautiful image out of that. Yeah, that's like an engineering view. Let's make it beautiful at that point. So first of all, we're going to hide the symmetry. And yeah, let's leave the floor here. Um, we only simulated the half model. But there is something that's called a transform. And the transform moves your scene, or your display, I better to say, in a way you want it to be. So this time, let's see what we have here. Oh boy, there's a lot of them. Yeah, we don't care about them. The only one we need to see is identity, which is like nothing done. And then we can go for symmetry, which is something that is created at the point where you create that symmetry boundary. And if we click on that, look, we have duplicated our car. So, I think we still are in a perspective here, in a projection mode perspective. If I wanted to have an engineering view, I would always go for parallel. Because then, you can look at the side, at the front, at the other front, <laughs> which is the actual front, top, yeah, bottom, don't know if that's interesting. Maybe for how does my under tray work examinations. So, but we want to make it beautiful. So we are going to say make it perspective. And now I also want uh, to um, have a bit more colors in here. So I'm increasing that to some higher value. So we started at 31. Um, the range of levels is 2. 
<laughs> which is also funny like if you go for two you can directly see where it's over pressure where it's under pressure but that's like nonsense um, you could also go for some high value like 511 which gives you a very smooth image then yeah I just like it better than before that's like you could al also print and put it into your engineering design report or something because it's already some quite cool stuff uh, yes yeah zero is still right in the middle whether um, or it could be in the middle let's see what happens if I do that yes now it's right in the middle where the white thing is yes that's like a decent representation of your pressure um, might not be the best for every single region of the of the um, car but could be a decent one already that's like my st my personal starting point for for any further things here so let's bring that to something else and do something called wall shear stress which is just another quantity so I'm basically first uh, going back to uh, some standard representation what could appear on your screen oh that's like blue red bright no I wanted to go for blue red which is oh boy that's so ugly yeah, that's uh, like the image you had before. Yeah, compare that. Just for a second. This one against that one. <laughs> that's like, I did it in 48 minutes now with big explanation. And it's like a light year away from my point of view. Okay. So let's do another quantity, which is wall shear stress. Wall shear stress. And wall shear stress has a magnitude. We will focus on that lat later. Why? Um, what's wall shear stress and what it is good for? Absolutely nothing. No, <laughs> I'm not quoting songs here. It is good for something. Wall shear stress mm, um, is exactly what it says it's like the airflow shearing on the surface so it's a quantity that doesn't appear in the free flow only on surfaces first thing to know um, and it is it can be an indicator for um, flow separation from the surface because as long as the flow is shearing on my surface yeah The flow is still attached to it. At that point, when there's no like shear stress, the flow must go either stand still or go directly vertical off the surface, and that's flow separation. Okay. So we are basically looking for regions where it's zero. So first of all, um, let's make a new field function for that. What do I have here? Oh, we have that fire. Do we like that fire? I guess we do like that fire. Yeah, you could you could literally go for any of them. But I really like something that looks like fire. Uh, it's a transparent fire. We will just to make a new field function which I will call wall shear stress for now uh, a color bar calling called wall shear stress for now and I will just uh, modify it so you can see it in the background so named it like that so first of all I have shown you that there are these positions below but there are also like um, toggle options on the top yeah you can drag them around and the toggles on top they indicate opacity 
Yeah, for a normal field function that might just be one. But in this case, uh, the white one was uh, turned to zero. We are turning it like that. So now we have wall shear stress. Just gonna tune it a bit. I always like it when it's like equally distant. 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and I even like it in these cases when you have something more purple in there. Nah. Not so cool this time. Okay, let's just uh, keep it like that and move them to three quarter midpoint and one quarter of that. Okay, can you now tell me where there's flow separation? I can't. First of all, the floor needs to go away. Yeah, I can't tell where there's flow separation. Well, that has something to do with my color bar. So first of all, I'm limiting that to something like one. <laughs> that looks cool from my point of view. But can I say where it is flow separation? No. Yeah, in the white regions, there is flow separation, most likely. But can I tell like the exact points? Do I already focus on that? No, I don't. So that's why I will turn the color bar into something which is not a linear scale, but a logarithmic scale. And the brightest points, that's where we really have flow separation. So what I'm doing now is I'm putting that one a bit up like 0.01. And now I have like white spots where I most likely have flow separation. So here is flow separation. And let's see. Oh, on my wings here on the back side, there is flow separation. There's flow separation. Do I have flow separation? Oh, what's happening in my diffuser? That's like horrible. That part of the diffuser is not working at all. I can tell because there's flow separation. Yeah, it doesn't follow the follow the the surface emo anymore but still i think that might be i can tune it a bit better but i have three labels i have three orders of magnitude on my color bar uh, on my legend on my uh, c uh, yeah right here that's like an appropriate thing if i had like yeah something like 13 and uh, look at that middle value that's like horrible so let's Put it at maybe 0.4. Nah. Or. <laughs> Damn your rear tires. Well. What do you mean? <laughs> Hi, Hannes. Nice that you tuned in again. Makes me kind of happy. So let's do it to two. Ah, damn you, rear tires. Yes, that's true, because that's uh, the rear tire wake is killing my flow in the in the diffuser, most likely. So I tuned it a bit to 0.2 and make it here uh, to 2 pascals and make it... Yeah, exactly. The jetting effect of the tire outwash just gets dragged into the diffuser and flow se separates everything from the flow. So like that. I can I can see now that we have flow separation at like the top edge of the profile, or it might indicate that we have flow a uh, flow separation here. Uh, that's an issue, and here we have also a slight issue. The steps on the front edge here is uh, also maybe critical, but uh, yeah. If I had more time, I could work on these as well. But these are indications, okay, hmm, maybe your geometry needs to work over. It doesn't work as intended. And this image, 
serves multiple purposes. It's aesthetic, from my point of view. Yeah? And it's also meaningful, because you can easily detect what you're looking for. So, um, let's tune it a bit more, because um, let's increase the number of um, levels here. Yeah, looks even better. <laughs> nice, you can see how the, the front tire outwash gets dragged along here as well. And um, yeah, that looks already looks better. How, do we have perspective here? Yes, we do. That's already kind of nice. And yes. To those of you who might say, uh, well, yes, that's more like arts and that's not an engineering view. I like my uh, standard red and blue better. Blue, red, like that one. You can also tell, yeah, the blue parts is uh, like the like the uh, the um, flow separation. I tell you, well, this color bar serves like no proper, no, uh, no. It has there's no reason to use this color bar because um, those who of you who argue, yeah, it's like red 100%, blue 100%, yellow 100%, and green 100%. And I got to tell you, we humans do not uh, perceive these colors equally as 100%. If that's your argument, that my representation with that wall shear stress fire is like wrong, I got to tell you this one is wrong because we are perceiving it wrong. Yeah? If you want to have it equally perceived then go for something like that see the green is not over focused now all colors are scientifically matched so you perceive them constantly but still there are some of us which can't see like green or red and for them this color bar doesn't totally doesn't work yeah, what should we do? Shall we go for something grayscale? Yes, we could. Maybe like that. Focusing on the... Um, yes, that does work. For those of us who are not able to see any colors, this also works. But there is... Could we plot wall shear stress? Line integral convolution. Yes, Zuga. That's like our next topic that we're, we're handling. But uh, let me, yeah, to see the flow pattern. Yeah, we'll see, yes, we're doing that uh, soon, 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 soon. So, yeah, there are some color bars which could be seen by people with some, yeah, flaws in their color vision, but it's, we can't serve it right for everybody. So, if we can't do that, there's like no reason not to use these color bars if they focus on what we want to see and um, also, from my point of view, serve some aesthetic purpose. Okay, Zuga wants to see some line integral convolution. I'm not sure if everybody of you has heard about that, but that's like something important, especially for wall shear stress. Um, and even more, we have improved the wall shear, uh, the, the line integral convolution in the last update. So first of all, wh where we are starting is we right click on the scene and then say we make a new displayer. This time it's a vector displayer. So, a vector displayer. That's like how you did in the old times and you can still do it today. So, we are selecting our parts, like region, complete, for now. Wow, well, that's horrible. <laughs> and that's like, that's a vector scene. Yeah, you can't see anything. 
So um, that's a vector seed, but we are switching the display mode from glyph to line integral convolution. And we can't see nothing. Yeah, that's because we have th these boundaries in our airfield. So we remove them and remove uh, these ones as well. Remove, doing the same for front and doing the same for the rear. Okay. Line integral convolution. Well, we have something on the tires, but that's all that we see. First of all, we still have the run field function. We want to go. Whoop. Ah, here we go. Um, we go for wall shear stress. Because wall shear stress itself is a vector quantity. It's like wall shear stress in X, wall shear stress in Y, and wall, sh wall shear stress in Y, and wall shear stress in Z. Yeah, that's why it's a vector quantity. And we looked only looked at the magnitude last time. So here we go. And it's asking us the min magnitude and the max magnitude. So we are just copying like from the last, saying something like this. And going for 255 again. And t -t 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 switching to logarithmic scale. Um, and <laughs> I, ah yes, I wanted to apply my wonderful wall shear stress color bar again. So, here we do have the, our flow pater patterns as well. So we have a wall shear uh, stress line integral convolution of just the half car. How did we manage that? First we called that like that and then we switch to symmetry. Bam, here we go. <laughs> Not gonna lie, that looks amazing. Thank you. That's we have worked sixty four minutes on that with a lot of talking. That's everything everyone can do. And it's all not only valid for race cars. You can do this with like every single simulation. It's not that much of an effort. So, here we go. Line integral convolution. We can see the flow separation here. We can see the flow separations there. And we even see, uh, okay, yes, the integration along these lines has some difficulties at these points. That must be the real flow separation because we can't say, okay, wall shear is going in which direction there? I don't know. Yes, same for every region. Okay. <laughs> That's this so far. Sometimes ago we changed something in our displayers um, with an update and to be honest the the underlying simulation is older than these changes so the enable ca uh, gamma correction is not applied at typically at these um, and um, the lighting has changed I think to something like that point eight point four maybe nah got to look this up how it is nowadays <laughs> okay while we have that we will just uh, disable the Gamma correction. No, it doesn't work today. I'm sorry. Um, disable this and uh, reverting to zero zero zero. No, it was one zero zero one hundred. I guess. 
Okay, um, working further on that. So, if you want now to post-process this further, I would advise you to make some more of these uh, uh, line integral convolution things. For example, you could um, make something with your velocity field and then add a derived part to it. So creating a new derived part which is just a section, plain section and that's going to be through all of them and then it should have a normal of y and no offset so it starts at minus one millimeters which is like the full middle and we are putting this into an existing display line integral convolution one like that so setting it to the side so okay let's tune it for now line integral convolution is here we will just call it 24 um, velocity line integral convolution um, mm, 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 mm. changing the color bar to our standard which was um, cure I guess I called it cure 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 pressure oh, look at this there's cure pressure which we already did and here is cure bright yeah I like it I like it and then let's see what we can do here okay we should have some meaningful values here like 5 meters per second minimum and 25 meters per second maximum seems reasonable to me because everything that's below that's uh, just right now standing and everything above is just like moving but we can also say like okay I want to have that main velocity in the middle so I'm maybe changing to kilometers per hour and doing here 20 and 100 so we have that main velocity of 60 kilometers per hour just in the middle but that's something a bit uncommon for for uh, uh, scientific purposes so I'm switching back to meters per second and yes now we have something here in the middle that's like okay I want oh don't want this that can happen from time to time Where's my chat? Chat, where are you? Ah, here you are. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. Deathstroke, I have read your comment. I will answer it like after what I'm currently doing. Okay, just a second. So first, uh, we are switching back the the legend here under. Uh, color bar properties orientation and then I go for something which is 0 0.73 0 0.08 where's the standard position so now we maybe want to automate a bit of the post processing so uh, let's first switch that uh, aspect ratio of the scene to 16 by 9 which I personally like better. And now we want to swipe through uh, the whole simulation. So I'm going for the line integral convolution here and animation and it's set to pulls. And I say to say do a continuous sweep. Then it says okay um, what do you want to do? Cycle time 10 seconds, auto range, yes, pre compute, yes, I want to. Um, um, start value, end value. 
we need to customize that later. Repeat, no, we want bounce. Number of steps, 25. Yes. So let's see, maybe we can go for minus 500 here and see what happens. Or minus 750. That's an offset. And I'm not sure at that point if we have to enter it in meter or in... Zuga, again, your um, normalization. Okay. Uh, if to normalize uh, uh, your velocity or not. Just putting that one up here. Um, yes and no. Um, if you switch velocities between um, simulations, you should um, normalize your velocity or maybe just switch to total pressure coefficient directly. Okay? If but I would not advise you to to switch uh, to switch uh, uh, velocities between simulations because why would you? Why? I don't s directly see a reason for that. If you can argue why, then of course normalizing might be something good. But it gets harder to grasp if you normalize things. So let's let's do this. So my my legend is vertical again. Let's see what happens if I say I want now to play the animation. Yeah, I thought as much. Yeah, yeah, it's like I think it's meters. So let's say minus point seven five. Let's see what happens now. It's pre-computing. Computing. Yes, and we can see exactly what I wanted to. So we're sweeping now through the car from inside to outside and doing that section over and over again. And if I wanted to, Um, I was wondering if it could be useful to evaluate the car in different velocities, low speed, medium speed, high speed. Well, uh, the downforce can be normalized by velocity. And the thing we are arguing about here is um, we say that aerodynamics matter more the faster you go, of course, because it has a quadratic influence. And we say that, the, that how the... Um, drag and downforce coefficients change over speed is kind of irrelevant to us. That's like the simplification we do at the very start and that's why we don't need low, medium, high speed. And besides that you have different mesh requirements for different speeds. Yeah, Thinking about wall Y+. Rewatch the last stream, I might uh, tell you about that there. I'm not sure. So if we wanted to record that, you can also say here, like, do the record bu uh, button, set your representation, frame rate, animation length, cycle time, make a movie, make a directory uh, of frames and combine it to a movie later. Everything's possible. Yeah, but you can also say, like, I want to have more of these sweep values. So. Yes, and while that's running, I can answer the question by Deathstroke. Deathstroke, um, you had a question regarding last time when you asked how many how many million cells you could use. Um, this mesh has thirty six million cells in a half car. Um, Yes. Um, I can't exactly tell you about your simulations because I haven't ever done one. For your simulations, 
Are you referring to the grand number while determining mesh size at different speeds? No, I'm referring to um, the wall shear stress, uh, to the wall Y plus value. Not grand number, that might be something else you need to change for different speeds. Uh, but can we, let's first stick to the first question first. So, um, your simulations is basically if you're not going straight line but a bit uh, to the side and the stream comes from still comes from the front you could just rotate that i'm no expert in vehicle dynamics so i can't tell you if you have to like uh, um, what your angles are correct and what else you have to bear in mind you must also uh, take into account how your uh, how your drive, uh, how your sp suspension um, changes during that process, yeah? Like your car is not only yaw, but it's also tilting in a direction, maybe pitching, and your wheels are not pointing straight. There are so many different things you have to bear in mind. And of course, for your simulations, you need a full model. So going from 36 million to the double, yeah? Could be a reasonable effort in from this starting point of that simulation. Yeah, shouldn't be too complicated. But I fear the turning parameters of the wheels and the pitch your stuff. You need to 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 put some some uh, clever thinking into that before applying that because. You should maybe optimize uh, um, how the wheels are pointing. You can put a transform in there for rotating the wheels around their wheel center in any direction. But you have to really, really speak with your vehicle dynamics department and your sp suspension guys to get that straight. Because wasting that effort to make a yaw simulation and not having that moving suspension or the moving body and tires and so in there as well will be a waste of time and resources. And bear in mind, you will likely double your memory um, requirement because you're just going from uh, from uh, 36 to 70 million cells. Okay, courant number, uh, we most likely refer to CFL, courant friedrichs levy number, which is something you determine around here. Yeah, that's here we go. Coupled implicit courant number is at maximum 100. And um, that's like I told in the last time, you can think about courant number as some pseudo time step. Yeah, it's kind of related to the idea that you are pushing your your solution um, through your through your um, domain from the front to the end, and say at at a certain coronal number you just advanced like one cell, yeah, per iteration, and then in higher coronal numbers you push the solution further through it. Um, Per iteration. So, what's the the benefit of high coron numbers versus low coron numbers? With high coron numbers, you can f faster reach the state on, of convergence. So, from the start to the simulation to the end of simulation, you might need further itera uh, less iterations, because like the solution comes in at the front and goes gets pushed through until the end, and all the information reaches faster conversion because you're going faster through that. The backside is um, faster pushing the solution faster through that domain can lead to instability. It Maybe it doesn't converge at all. That's why at some points here the black is the CFL, the courant number or the courant Friedrich Levy number gets reduced automatically to get better convergence at that point. Because you can see here, my continuity gets back up 
and then the automatic CFL says okay we need to reduce that and boom CFL is reducing again yeah uh, CFL is increasing again and residual is falling and we push harder again and tuning that CFL number is really really hard and the other thing is if you only look at the number of steps of iterations it might be a bit misleading but you, because you don't want minimum iterations you might want faster time until the simulation is done and that needs not be uh, less iterations but also faster iterations because at high CFL numbers um, the iteration itself might take longer because numerical theory we are applying schemes there like think about that like we have a coarse mesh first we start to solve our equations for a for a fine mesh and then we say okay let's go back to a coarser mesh let's go back to a coarser mesh let's go back to an even coarser mesh so we step down and try to simulate try to calculate on a really low uh, coarse meshes with the old sim uh, data and then advance 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 to finer meshes again that's called a v cycle you can also do a w cycle like that yeah and the further down you have to go it's like a stability the more stable your simulation is the less necessarily you need to go down steps and go back up so yes if you have a high current number you might to go further down and further up again and that v just gets bigger and takes longer i hope anybody has understood me that far <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> yes death stroke i'm i'm just doing my best over here Thank you for the compliments. Um, okay. We have like half an hour left. We can we can make something really, really nice if you want to. So we have that line integral convolution done. But I want to have something really cool in my simulation right now. Which is maybe more like... A what I typically do at my job. The things I typically do at my job th are um, giving context to my simulations. And that's why I add some more features. For example, I have put a cone in here and duplicated it 28 or 56 times. See? Cones. <laughs> and I will put them in here and make a new surface displayer. I'm just adding context to whatever I'm doing here. Okay, and then I see nothing in my simulation. This is because I have something here that's, uh, that's saying, okay, representation um latest surface ah just switch for geometry et voila we see cones in here so i'm go just gonna say they are called uh, cone red and there's like two parts per cone so i'm going for this and making a list and say okay only show me what has been selected so I'm first just searching the white ones the white surfaces noble 6 I am that's like a topic for another session because that's a uh, uh, bit more complicated I can I can do this uh, maybe later on a limited on a limited uh, plane section on um, 
on the uh, rear wing if you want to. But um, that's like really, really advanced. Okay, where was I about? To, what I was about to do? Ah, okay. First, yeah, I need something, uh, some content uh, for next time that you guys tune ag in again. <laughs> so maybe that's uh, my topic uh, in another session. So I'm, I duplicated it and call it colon white, or just white, because I'm adding more things to that, and refreshing the scene. So cone red going for the parts and I'm filtering it by all the parts that are selected and then I say okay let's filter out the whites white and then just disable them and we only have the red parts here then I'm switching from color mode type to uh, geometry part ha <laughs> and they are red you can even see that there's a part in the middle missing. Cool. Okay, we have red cones now. And for the other ones, I will just do basically the same. Go for the three dots. Say, okay, display it as a list. And uh, show me what has been selected. And then I search for red. Remove the red ones. And now we have white stripes or gray stripes. <laughs> on that. I'm gonna go for constant coloring here and we'll just apply some white. Okay. Next. Let's make some Ah, nice. So thank you, Hannes, for that uh, Coursera link uh, that might even be useful. I guess it was uh, done together with uh, the with Siemens. I'm not sure. I will take a look later. Okay. Or I can take a look now. Ah, yes. Hey, that's a very, very good thing. That's actually a very, very good thing. I will just... Uh, how can I go to the English? side it's it's a german side right now i don't know why but i will yeah come on here we go that's uh the side that uh, hannes was uh... yeah you can post links i can see it here in the chat that's totally okay so I've pinned it to 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 the chat right now, and um, uh, that's English. Why can't I see it in English? It's available in eight languages, and somehow it detects that I'm a German, but uh, I don't know why. So <laughs> this guy who's teaching is is one, two. Uh, is one of the founders of SimCenter Star CCM Plus. And even though SimCenter Star CCM Plus as a software and as a company was acquired like multiple times, yes, this guy is still connected to us. And he's, uh, he's teaching as a professor at several universities. And, and, uh, uh, he is still connected to our physics uh, development department, and the guy is just awesome. I can next time, uh, uh, next time I can, I can, I can even. Uh, I don't know what I didn't know what to say. Um, just that's that's really really good. It's uh, available in English and subtitles in German and eight and seven hundred uh, other languages. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Hannes. That was a valuable addition. So, I have that white part here, and let's see what more I have in the road markings. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I have something called New Road, and some stripes, which are just like... <laughs> they are just like... See, I just created them here, and I'm just adding the stripes, 
come on, to my white one. And then I'm adding the new road to a new surface. So, calling that road o one road and switching the this stuff to preset uh, not uh, not geom geometry part but preset material yeah me as this is my job i have thousands of uh, preset materials but maybe i can share them one day um there are some surfaces some things in my there are also like millions of surfaces in the uh, in the uh, database here as well let's see what I have done uh, uh, let's let's not do it preset material but just uh, let's constant color it constantly um, so it looks like some kind of ground uh, maybe starting with RGB values here or these like maybe this looks like a road still we don't see anything because we have that uh, latest surface and not that okay so let's refresh it and i guess we are going to take the watch stress here okay so let's see what we are going to throw out here um I don't want to have the MRF for this representation. I don't want to have that uh, for the representation. I want to have body, wings, under tray. Um, I don't want to have the wings, uh, the, the wheels. So let's start with that. Already looks kind of nice. Switching to parallel, add uh, the perspective. <laughs> You need some erotic renders. Yes, we're going there. So we have that as a start right now. Um, let's see what we can also add here. Maybe we're putting away the body as well, so we only have the wings left. So, just this hook is like the late, the last thing that you enable to have nice renders, but we can also click it right now. Uh, what am I doing? I'm doing stupid things and it doesn't change anything from my view right now, but that will soon change. First of all, we are going here for the quality sessions and um, I'm always using kind of quality sessions like that using a quality caution that's logarithmic and using a noise reduction between 0 and 1 which is 0.5 is okay and I typically go for 400 maximum samples so we don't see anything here why don't we uh, because with um, we didn't do anything first uh, we need to notice that there has popped up something which is called advanced rendering effects first we can enable shadows here and see we got shadows um, and then we have something called the effect rendering material effect it's uh, put to non-physical I don't like that let's go for matte and if voila advanced rendering takes time and I can say that street is yeah for now it's okay I guess um, let's go to the cones shadows they need shadows everything needs shadows and it's uh, matte but it's not straightly matte it also has kind of a um, kind of a, a shiny appearance if you look at that at a cone so I'm just adding a little bit of clear coat here like 0.1 and the image already gets better so for the white yeah of course shadows we need that advanced rendering is also matte and does it have a clear coat no nah, i don't think so 
Okay. <laughs> we have that wall shear stress which is enabled, so it needs shadows. And it should have some matte appearance. No glossy layer on top here. Okay, let's go. I have like 20 minutes until we are done for today, or maybe we are, we are going further. Let's add some tires, shall we? Where are my tires? Wheel. Yes, let's just uh, put all the wheels in there. Selecting all of them. Drag and drop in them making a new surface. So, where is my new surface? Here's my new surface. Calling it 04 wheels. So, doing this, going for, oh, maybe, maybe, going for, don't know what, not changing this here, I guess. Um, ah, yes, uh, doing, doing some, need the other representation, geometry here. Okay, at least we have tires in there. I don't like them yet. Yeah, gonna copy that and paste it for further. So first we are doing the wheels. So let's take some preset materials. And the preset material that I'm choosing this time is, do you want aluminum? wheels. Well, that might be nice. I don't know if I have two aluminums here. They are stored under two wheels. Uh, bup, 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 bup. Mm, rendering materials. So metal. We have two aluminums. What's that? What's that? Why do we have two alu aluminums? Which one is the correct one? I don't know. Okay. Ah, the second one is the correct one because that's the original one. Because our language is American English and we are not ta saying aluminium like it is in metal. We are saying aluminum. Okay, tires need to go from there. So, going for the parts. See what's selected and say, okay, tire. You're making me tired. And we have the wheels. Okay. Need to copy that one, maybe another time. So this is 05 tires, and let's show it. So preset material, um, 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 um. and there is something called dark rubber. So. And parts that need to be go go out. Uh, it's rim and it's faces. Ah, nice. So we only have like tires left. Okay, cool. I like it. Let's go further. What do we have here? What do we have left? <laughs> we have brakes. Yes, we can go for brakes. Let's go brake discs. Ah, not wheel. Brake, brake. New surface. Um, that's 06. Brakes. It will be a preset material. Geometry. I think our wheels are too bright at that point. We will not go for aluminum, but I have something that I called uh, MG, which could look like magnesium wheels. Okay, 
that's kind of better. Okay, for the brakes, I will take. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, I will take MGO for the for the uh, wheels later. Let's see what do we want for brakes. Maybe something like this. Yeah, that looks decent. MGO might be something. Yeah, that looks decent already. So, what else do we have here? We have that sim body. Do we have split surface? Oh no. Yeah, and that's uh, when we when things really get. Ah, oh, we have something called visuals. That's so cool. That's cool. Okay. What do we have here? Suspension front. Suspension rear. Hmm. Looks nice. Let's just take that. Ah, let's just take them both and make them one surface. And call it 07. Suspension. It will be some aluminum parts. So, going for that. Geometry. Shadows. Oh, do we have shadows at the brakes? No, we don't. Now we do. Suspension. Preset material will be aluminum. Ah, nice. <laughs> then let's go for the helmet or the head. Make a new surface. Uh, da, 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 da. Preset material because it will be. Mm, let's. Are we at 08? Yes, we are at 08. Helmet. Geometry. And preset material will be white matte, white clear coat. And some shadows. So where do we have that? Visor. Here we go. And for the visor, I typically use something that's called mirror. Visor. Preset material. And geometry. Do it. The preset is mirror. Yes. What else do we have here? Yeah, we have that whole sim body. <laughs> yeah, that's like a small drawback to our overall impression because that one will be just one surface you could go and uh, split that all up but won't be the same let's number 10 body and that will be our minor drawback of our visualization because that's uh, yeah we should look for a decent carbon representation here but as far as we don't have one I'm just gonna go for black clear coat and then we have TSAL ha <laughs> that's one that one's gonna be fine we have two of them what's the difference ah this one is at the right position so a new surface here Front wing attachment, aha, uh -huh, rear wing attachments, front wing attachments. Yeah, 
There's gonna be some metal stuff. What else stuff do we have here? That's our E box. Come on. Don't want to mark anything here. Yeah, we could spend ages on more details here. <laughs> What's that? Oh, that's more lights. Yeah, gonna do some lights here as well. And there's some DV box here as well. Driverless stuff. Ah, here's the cooling, by the way. Yeah, that we haven't installed. And there's another light. Maybe we can even use that. So, what do we have here? So we have four new parts that we need to treat. That's TSAL. That will be. Yeah, let's let's do them all at once. Set them to geometry. Then we can instantly see what we haven't seen before. Preset part maybe. And 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 and, and. first the T S A L. It will be a red light. Yeah, looks a bit crap. Maybe now we can't do anything about that. What's that part here? Ah, that's the wing attachments. Let's make them shadows. It needs yes. Let's make them some kind of metal. Going for titanium here. Why not? Do we have our suspension already colored and? Uh, with shadows? Yes, we do. Oh, we have no uprights. Guys, that's an issue. 11. Um, 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 um. That was TSAL. 12. Um, was it? Wing attachments. Then we have. Ah, uh, they are not in the right position. We're not using them. What do we have here? Ah, uh, that's another light. Ah, uh, that's also in the wrong position. So we're not using that that as well. So that's like what we have for now. Oh, we could put the driverless box on there. There's enough space. Don't know why it was left out in the simulation. But we're still lacking. Not sure if it is in the... Hmm. Oh, we don't have, uh, we don't have uh, uh, wheel hubs. So we're just adding wheel, wheel hubs here. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Suspension. New upright. Yes. That's a new surface. And suspension rear. Ha ha ha. It already contains everything. So, going for the suspension here. What I once did, and might also do now, just putting the brake pads to a new surface here. And you can also drag and drop that over and say, okay, it's in the suspension. Delete it from the suspension, please. Yes. So, what? I need to work on the suspension first. Suspension, parts. Because there is something that I don't want to have in here the suspension rear. Because I have them duplicated now. Now, here we go. That looks familiar. So we even have a wheel hub here. 
Yeah, nice. And do we have some wheel hub over there? Not yet. So what do we have here? New upright. Ah, that's brake pads. Damn. Ah, new upright brake pads. That needs to go. Ah. Stop, 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 stop. Brake pads, brake pads. Goes into the other surface. So that's here. Uh, 13 front, front upright. And type default. Now it will be preset material. Shadows we need, and we need some metal material. What do we want to have? Titanium again. Or do we need, we take the other aluminum maybe at that point. So last thing we do is uh, 14 brake pads. And that one, how do we have the uh, geometry part? Brake pad also needs geometry part. And this type, time it goes to constant. And we go for color, which is some red, I guess, or maybe, yeah, that's okay for now. And then we go shadows, yes, of course, and we go for light emitting. And then we have like intensity 10. The brake pads will be shiny red now. And I apply a trick, setting the opacity to zero. Should do the trick. So, next thing is I'm changing the my background. Background color is solid right now. Going for solid black. Nah. It's a bit too dark, isn't it? What did we apply to the wall shear stress, by the way? Does it have shadows? Yes, it has. Ah, it's just the aluminum that's shining so bright. Now we need some, some decent position. And we're changing the background again. To environment map. Heroes square. No, I want the warehouse. And I'm taking minus one, oh, oh, 90. Well, 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 doesn't that seem familiar? Yeah, that was like 10 minutes work. <laughs> yeah, but just it was 10 minutes work because I need to know what to do. I knew what I had to do at that point. I think it's cool right now. We could also replace uh, the the... the wings instead of wall shear stress we could go for something like pressure but i think that's cool so far and i did save it i didn't want to save it oh damn never mind i think we are at a decent point right now we have finished with some cool stuff if you have further questions, just type them here in the chat. Okay. The content will be available later. Adding streamlines with total pressure coefficient. Well, we could do this. Ah, we call it CP taught. Like that. We could do that. Lucky me, 
I already have some streamlines here, like this, or that. Yeah, I think I'm just adding these streamlines here for now. So making a stream, yeah, that's something cool I can also show. Like, how do you add streamlines? That's first my first displayer here. Do, 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 do. That's 30 stream lines. Um, okay, making them a bit smaller because I don't like them to be too big. Shadows we need, yes. Um, the scalar field we want to have, first we need to put that legend a bit away. Okay, what function? Uh, Hannes said CP taught. Ah, pressure. Total pressure coefficient he wanted to have on that. And having minus one to one. Okay. The, the color bar will be. Yeah, and now we have the issue that we have overlapping color bars. Yeah, red means something on both color bars and yellow is also in both color bars. So we can't use that one. <laughs> what I could do is just edit a copy and call it cure blue. Blue green maybe. And then delete this, that. And that, like this, yeah, not going down to black. Okay, then going again for 255 of these. I'm not sure if pr total pressure coefficient really works here. Maybe I'm just going for uh, velocity magnitude. Just making 5.555 to, or maybe 10 to 25 or something. Nah, doesn't really work. <coughs> I'm a bit limited in my color bar. That's a bit uh, a pity. Linear scale works better. I guess I need to add some black here. Yeah, that maybe looks better now. What do you think, guys? And I will make it not non-physical. I will make it transparent. Now it looks like water or something. And then I will duplicate it. Because now I have my streamlines copy and I call it stream lights. One. I will make this one a tiny little bit bigger, like 0.7, and the other one is 0.5. And I will switch the rendering material effect to light emitting. Yeah, that looks like shit right now, but that will cho soon change, going for intensity like 5. Yeah, that's better. And now we are making this opacity to zero. Ah, it needs kind of some fine tuning here. But maybe if we change the color bars right now to 
there was some pink and light blue. Do you have some preset in mind? Pink and light blue. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, let's just just go somewhere standard and take um uh, mm, 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 mm. take our standard cure bright Nah, still we have that yellow, and I don't like that. And I think it's better if we have something matte in the middle. Ooh, yes. Ooh, yes. Ooh, yes. That's like more decent. That's more like the lighting effect I wanted to have. <laughs> That's mostly white. Uh, da, 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 da. Cure blue green. How does that look now? That's really, really hard, isn't it? Maybe we are over lighting a bit. Let's go for two, maybe. Okay, still we can put some more streamlines in there. We, I guess I have something for the rear wing. Ooh, that's a cool one. Put them into the streamlines. Interesting. Hmm. I'm not yet satisfied with that. Changing back to this. Maybe getting a bit of roughness here. Yeah, that looks good, I think. Yeah, I hope you like it. Maybe a bit too overcolored right now, with both having scalars on the surfaces and the streamlines. But I think we did good in like two hours. Okay, everybody, I guess that's it for today. Yeah? You can come back anytime and rewatch my stream from today. I thank you for your attention and I hope you tune in next time when we are maybe um, doing some other topics than SimCenter and Testar CCM Plus simulations for Formula Student Aerodynamics. I was asked about a, a cooling body, a heat sink for formula student purposes could be also valuable to you but let's see i will announce the topic both on linkedin and uh, in my twitch calendar i guess yeah so thank you for your attention it was great thank you for all the comments that you did in the in the chat i guess uh, i have answered them all yeah thank you hannes for contributing with that coursera link as well and all the other comments like Zuga and Noble6 I am. Thank you. That was really an addition to the value of this live stream. Yeah, see you next time, I hope.